Hey everyone, welcome to Invisible Walls episode 203 right here on GameTrailers.com. We have a bevy of awesome topics to talk about today. Uh, we're going to get into the big Mass Effect 3 controversy. We're going to talk about Ninja Gaiden. We're going to talk about the new Silent Hill. Ooh. <laughs> here to do that today is my old pal Ryan Stevens for the first time on the brand new set. That's me. Hi everyone. I saw your note. You were a little upset that you weren't here for the inaugural episode. Irony doesn't come across in, uh, in comments. <laughs> uh, we have Chris Wynn here. <laughs> the power of visuals, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good thing we're on camera. And we have Marcus Beer here as well. That's all right. I'll talk enough for me and him. <laughs> all right, so first we're going to talk about Ninja Gaiden 3. Uh, probably one of the most polarizing games, it seems like, among the games press in quite a while. Uh, not too many sky-high reviews, uh, a couple really low ones, a lot kind of in the middle there. Um, obviously, we gave it a 7.7. .7. Um, Chris, you are the only person on the panel who's actually played a good bit of Ninja Gaiden. What is kind of your take on the response to the game so far? And you played the preview build, right? You did I not play the, the preview build. build. So little, I don't know how much... buggy, right? There were some bugs in it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, um, in terms of like people being like s disappointed with it and stuff, I can kind of see where they're coming from. Yeah. Because you know, Ninja Gaiden One and Ninja Gaiden Two, they were both games that demanded a high, you know, discipline with the controls and the move lists and all these things. And uh, this game, at least from the preview build, I can kind of do anything I wanted, even if it was just the most basic attack and clear the entire preview build. Yeah. So. For me, I was disappointed with the preview build, but I haven't yet touched the retail yet. Well, I don't think anyone can deny that it's disappointing, bottom line. I mean... You're a hardcore Ninja Gaiden fan. I mean, you, you're the one who, uh, after we finished recording last week, you were like, that's it, I'm going to the mailroom. Where's my fucking copy yeah, of Ninja yeah, Gaiden Yeah, I, I enjoy the games. I enjoy the challenge in those games. I, I enjoy challenge in all games, but a lot of games that are difficult are really cheap. And I never feel like, at least in the past, I've never felt like in Ninja Gaiden that me failing was, was anybody's fault but mine. And a lot of games that are hard, a lot of sometimes it's the game's fault. It's like just, you know, the controls aren't there or the enemies are cheap. And granted, you do get, you know, the guys who throw the grenades from off the screen in Ninja Gaiden. But if you're good enough and you know how to dodge right, you can usually get away from those things. But, you know, even as a big fan, um, you know, it, there's no doubt that this game is disappointing. I mean, you, and it's not just this game. It went Ninja Gaiden, Ninja Gaiden Black, which to me is the pinnacle of the 3D franchise at this point. Ninja Gaiden 2 was a pretty big step down from Ninja Gaiden Black, and now we have another pretty significant step down from Ninja Gaiden 3. And I think a lot of people are trying to blame the quality of this game on Itagaki leaving, but I mean, truth be told, this series was already headed down that path with Ninja Gaiden 2. I mean, did you play Dragon Sword? No. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean the DS games? Yeah. I did play it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you think of that one? I thought it was interesting. It, you know, I wouldn't call it one of my favorite games in the series or anything, but I thought it was a pretty interesting take, and they used the hardware pretty well in that game. I think my big question, and this may be an Itagaki leaving sort of question, is do you feel like the series is getting more streamlined, kind of trying to be more mass market? I mean, it's got oh, yeah. multiplayer now. Yeah, and I think that's the other thing about this game, too, and, you know, when we review games, we review them on the normal difficulty setting. We always do it because we want to create that baseline. Whatever the default difficulty setting is, maybe they call it something goofy, but whatever the setting is, when you boot up the game and the developer is basically recommending to you, you play it on this setting, that's what you play it on. So in the past, playing these games on normal presented plenty of challenge. And what's happened this time is if you want the typical experience you get from a Ninja Gaiden game, you're going to have to go up to hard to get it. So there's no doubt, to answer your question, that they have nerfed this game. But it's, it's not just difficulty, right? Yeah. You say like they took out most of the magic, like the yep. move list. You have one Nimpo magic you cast throughout the whole game. The moves list actually is in there, but it's really buried, and the instruction book doesn't tell you how to get to it. Oh, there's an instruction book. Yeah. That's good. But it's pretty much worthless, yeah. but as you can, as you can see. Um, so it's... It, it's tough, honestly. I mean, I think a lot of people are looking at this game and comparing it to past Ninja Gaiden games instead of just comparing it to an action game. And that's what we have to do when we review games. It's not like we're reviewing this game against all the other Ninja Gaidens that came out. We're reviewing it against all the action hack and slash games that come out at the time. And that's where I think maybe some of the scores you've seen have been a little off base. Uh, I mean, if you look at some of the scores for this game, they're really low. And then you kind of look at the other games that have received that same score on that publication. I don't see where that adds up at all. So 
I was really disappointed. You're absolutely right. The whole thing is streamlined. You have one weapon. You only have the dragon sword, and then they give you a couple other swords here and there throughout the game. Um, but you lose the claws and the scythe and all that stuff. They, they say it's coming as DLC later, which I do not understand. But will it, will it, will it, but will it work? Okay. Right. Well, right, because the <laughs> multiplayer didn't work for the first day and a half. This game was on store shelves. So, but they're saying the DLC is free, but I don't understand why that those weapons just weren't a part of the game. So I think, you know, it's their first competitive online game they've ever made, and they've definitely had some missteps there. Um, the streamlining, I agree, it, it's to make it so it reaches a wider audience. I think in the past it has developed such a reputation for being difficult that just intrinsically casual players are like, I don't want anything to do with that because the games I'm playing already are tough enough. Let me ask you, oh, yeah. let me ask you, as a hardcore Ninja Gaiden fan who's been through the entire, you know, run of games, where do you want to see this game, this franchise go to get back to where it was? I mean, not necessarily replicating what Black did, but yeah. what, you know, where would you like to see it go? Well, I think this game in particular, it feels like it has nothing to do with the prior Ninja Gaiden games. Like in the past, Ninja Gaiden kind of had this supernatural element to it. Uh, where you're dealing with the fiends and, and these creatures that aren't really earthly. Well, most of the enemies you fight in this game are human beings or things that human beings made. Uh, there's a couple sections of the game where they try to kind of dip their toe back into Hayabusa Village and they talk about the spider clan and that stuff, but it doesn't last very long. So the first thing would be to take it back to the Ninja Gaiden universe. I mean, they unmask him like 50 times in this game, so he's kind of lost a lot of mystery. <laughs> Oh, what about the hand? Character? Did the hand thing end up being a good element, or kind it of take a, it or leave it? No, I mean they basically replaced um, the arm. Basically, what happens for people who haven't watched our review or don't know is in, early on in the game, his hand absorbs the dragon sword, and it's supposed to be this curse. It's a representation of all the lives that he has taken with the dragon sword over the years. And what happens is eventually he starts to succumb to it. It will go into these agreeably really shitty sections where the game slows down to a crawl and you have to like finish off a last battle or one of your teammates will heal you or whatever. Um, but that also, on the flip side of that, it allows you to do these crazy powered up attacks with the arm. Um, that basically allows you to jump from like five or six enemies at a time and kind of wipe them out uh, in like one flourish. Um, it kind of replaces stuff that was in the game prior, like the obliteration techniques. And the obliteration techniques are still in the game, but they're kind of different than they used to be before. So. I don't feel like the whole arm thing adds a whole lot to it. If anything, it's a deterrent because it does slow down the game in those sections. So I, I guess, you know, to kind of sum it all up, um, it's still a good action game. It's not an amazing game or a great game. It's a solid action game with some great moments. Um, it's pretty polished. I would say the camera, even though I had a couple issues here and there, is probably the best one that they've had so far. Can, can I ask one last final question? Yeah. When I think of these sort of action games, I kind of put them into two schools. There's the kind of the Devil May Cry Bayonetta school, and then there's the kind of God of War school, which you know is a little more friendly. Yeah. Is this sitting between those two, or is it, or is it kind of moved from? I put Ninja Gaiden in the Devil May Cry Bayonetta sure, school, sure. or has it moved completely to the kind of God of War quick time finisher school? I think the average thoughts? person will feel like it went to the God of War school. I think if you bump it up to hard, then you you can play it like you did past Ninja Gaiden games, and then it kind of strays more closely to the DMC type games where it's you know a lot about skill and timing and things like that. Um, but uh, if you're a Ninja Gaiden fan, I think you should still at least rent it and play it. I mean, it's still a fun game. Uh, I feel like people have been way too harsh on it. I don't think it deserves some of the scores that it's got. At the same time, it's definitely the worst 3D Ninja Gaiden game ever. Look, if you want me to put my ass on the line, I need answers. We're going to talk about what is undoubtedly the biggest story of the week, and that is with BioWare announcing they have plans to change the ending to Mass Effect 3. Now, just to go on the record here, I have not finished the game. Um, and here to talk about this, we have Jeremy Hoffman. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, man. Great job last week. Thank you. Megan Rue, big Mass Effect fan, is here. Hello. And as always, Marcus Beer. I'm always here. <laughs> but we, we're going to talk about not only their decision this week, but so many other things that have gone on. And in my opinion, and I, you know, we've discussed this before the podcast, so many missteps from Bioware. Uh, and I don't know whether it's out it's, of character for yeah, Bioware. Yeah, I think it's the sticky fingers of Electronic Arts all over them. You know, touching, sticking up. <laughs> I mean, because it really, it really does feel like somebody's been going. Yeah. Um, well, let's try to keep this structured. Let's yeah. kind of take it in order. Let's talk about the ending first. Now, I have not finished the game, but my perspective on this thing is kind of irrelevant to whether I've finished it or not. Um, my perspective is 
you don't ask an artist to go back and change his work of art. Um, and this is regardless, I, I take your word for it and everyone's word for it, the ending sucks. The ending can suck. This is kind of irrelevant to my point. Um, and, and I feel like, you know, we, there's always this struggle in our industry to say video games are art. And everybody hated Roger Ebert when he said video games aren't art, I don't consider them art. When you start asking an artist to go back and change his works and shape it to the way you want it, then I feel like it takes a little wind out of the sails as far as calling video games art. So 99 times out of 100, I agree with you. But what has been Bioware's mantra from the get-go with the Mass Effect series? You own the character. You shape the story. You own the game. And this is the, this is the problem a lot of people have. is not necessarily that they want a fluffy bunny, you know, everybody skips off in, under rainbows and eats you know, unicorns or whatever. Um, they wanted... <laughs> Some, they wanted an ending or you know uh, endings that were markedly different and you know this is you know so we're, we're is heading the big into complaint spoiler that territory. they're all too similar is that what the issue is i think my big complaint so i've now let's know, try not to played. spoil anything obviously because right. people watching may not have got there so let's be very prudent of that that's, there's there's going to have to be a there's going to have to be some spoilers so we're going to to kind of explain how it could so just been. spoiler be careful spoiler. guys i don't want to i'll keep it as close as possible but um the ending for me just didn't feel personalized, and I think that's my biggest issue. If you beat, for those of you out there that beat two, you know that once you go through that last relay, everything's kind of built around your character and how it hap who you've talked to, what loyalty missions you've had. Did you, did, you, did you upgrade your shields? Did you upgrade your guns? Did you upgrade everything? And then you could watch. I mean, everyone kind of remembers how in two that ending would stutter as it, you, you could tell it was reading. Trying to figure out what it, what, what it should be. And I feel like the end of Mass Effect 3 had the opportunity to do something similar to, similar to that, and they didn't. It, it, there's this scene where Shepard does the, like, we're going into the big battle fight, you know, speech. Mm -hmm. And he references things, but I felt like they could have referenced things that were personal to my story and maybe shown some cutscenes from me saving a character or letting a character go. And or resolving an issue or creating an alliance or it just none of it was there. Like it, that, was, it was, that was the frustrating part and I think at least as far as what Jeremy and I have talked about is the fact that you, you saw them do it. You know they're capable of it because that's how they did the ending of two. And they didn't do it here and it's, it just feels like this huge wasted opportunity because you know there are certain races that you pull on your side. There are certain individual people you pull on your side. And yes, it's in, as far as the war assets is concerned, it's like you can read about it, but those are misapp- It's like, but you've created character skins for all these people. Why am I not seeing that character? But again, this is going back to you guys saying why the ending sucks. And I think everyone's in agreement the ending does suck. I'm talking about a different argument here, which well, is- Well, and I, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that was, you know, I send everyone as it, the, the internet was blowing up yesterday and the day before, I kind of sent out a message and my thing was like, I, I'm more confused by their choice to change the ending than I was about their choice Correct. of an ending. Yeah. Like it's just, to me, it's like, there were people out there that disliked the ending and lost. There were people that, you know, what the hell's in the briefcase from Pulp Fiction? Right. Does this mean Tarantino has to go back because enough people complain online that he has to do What's an extra What's in the box in seven? You know, yeah. well, well, we know it's in the box, but <laughs> you know, it's like, what, you know, it's, people complain all the time and, and Yeah, I didn't like I the think, ending of Lost. I had watched it all the way through, mm -hmm. thought the ending sucked, but did I write a letter to the producer and be like, you need to go back and change? I would never. I, I think it's the expectations and I think it's different because, and I know what Marcus is gonna say, because you're supposed to own the story. Well, it's not, Which it's not just that. I mean, you, you, we're talking about Lost, we're talking about, um, you know, Pulp Fiction, we're talking about Seven, and those are, you know, I mean, Lost was obviously a huge investment, five seasons for everybody, six seasons, whatever it was. Um, you know, the movies were 90 minutes, two hours long. We're also talking about, you know, 100, 150 hours of gameplay that we have invested in that way putting our choices in, we're building our character. Are we going Paragon? Are we going Renegade? Are we gonna let, you know, are we going to, you know, do something with the Krogans that will piss off the Salarians or vice versa? We're making these choices. And in Mass Effect 2, it felt like those choices had an impact. In Mass Effect 3 so far, and I'm in Shane's boat, I mean, I haven't finished it, and I'll tell you why, because I got so sick and tired of people asking me what my reactions are at the ending. The game stopped being fun. 
I was literally looking at the clock, you know, how far am, in am I now? You know, am I doing enough stuff? I was trying to do the side quests and I liked, I'm a completionist. I like to do everything, but it just got so incessant with this that I went off and watched six different ending videos and um, was it the indoctrination video that we'll talk about in a, in a little while because I, I gave up because the game was no longer fun for me. Now, I will continue at my own pace over the next couple of weeks to finish the game. But, you know, having invested all that time, yeah, I want some closure. I mean, and whether it be, you know, Shepard's dead or Shepard's not dead or Joker's, you know, castrated or whatever the, the, these random endings are, <laughs> I want, you know, I want to, to, when I get there, to have this feeling of, wow, that was, you know, that was a worthy end. It doesn't, this, this whole game doesn't feel like a Bioware Work of art. But here's I, the problem. Well, I think but you, you that's the thing. If you have still thing. haven't beat the full game, so it's hard just to even, comment. Well, just even no. So far, I mean, you know, con considering how you know how far I'm in, you know. Well, he did watch the endings. But it's I but watched the, whole, the, the not just the endings, a bunch of other videos as well. You know, tailoring up to yeah. the engine. So I've seen a whole bunch of stuff, and I know enough about the law and the game and all the various other things to figure out where stuff is. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, spots in between that I'm going to have to connect yeah. the dots. But on. even even that though, like there, you being the completion as you are, and I am too, I know you're going to come across things on your ship that are going to blow your mind. Like, the entire journey, the entire game was amazing. There were closures. Like, I, certain characters turn up long enough for me to go, cool, things worked out awesome with you. I'm glad you rolling with me in two turned out to be this great. And they'd be like, yeah, I'm better off for it. And I'm like, cool, why don't you go help me out with the Crucible? And they'll be like, all right, I'm going to go fight on the front lines. Like, there is resolution for a bunch of characters. The problem is, is like, with the final part of the game is, you get to that point and you have all these bullet points you can read about, but you get to that final scene and that's it. It's just like, okay, cool, you did all this work, thanks, everyone's here, and then you're on your own. And it's like, if I was going to be on my own, then why did I just spend the last 30 hours rounding up the entire freaking universe to come through the Mass Effect relay to come fight Earth? Like, but there was a purpose to that. I mean, you said that they did show up and they went off and did something that helped your cause. Certain people did. And I think, so here's, but that's the thing. So you've called in, you know. On Marx's point, you've called in all these groups. You have, you know, if Rex lived in the first game, if, you know, you had the Koreans, if you had this, and it just none of that was reflected in the last half hour. And I think my biggest issue with the game wasn't so much the ending, and when I say ending, I mean like the cinema ending I got. Yeah. It's you get to this very last room, and I, th I know it's different for certain people, but for me, it said, you know, not spoiling it, go right for this ending, go down the middle for this ending, and go left for this ending. And for me, I would have rather just had them tell me what, take me to the ending. Because I would have felt like all of my choices mattered at that point. And now I'm stuck, like I've got no choice, I can't pick the right, because at the end, like, Are there if any I would, elements common between all three? Yes, well that's also that's, the biggest that's issue. The biggest issue. issue. They're all very uh, common. Yeah, of all the endings I watched, I mean, literally some of the endings, it's a difference in color palette. Yep. Gotcha. That, yeah. Honestly, and I'm so good. I'm not even getting into that, but I think the issue with me was that But they have to choice. stop the game somehow, right? right? Right, but the point is is you could have been a paragon for the last 150 games and you could walk up and do the renegade decision. And I think that's and vice that for versa. Me, you could be a like, dick for three games and go, oh, well, I want the good ending, and you're going to pick whatever that one is considered. So great. I felt like it, once you hit that end, if they would have just taken me there, I would have felt like a bigger impact where it's like, oh my God, all my choices did matter. Where all of a sudden you get to the end now and you're like, well, what choice do you want? But you can still go the path that you were. I mean, they're you basically could. giving you the option there. As long as you have the option to be what but you I think, were while I the think whole time you played, what's the difference? The, it, the now means that your choices for the last 150 hours didn't matter. But it does. does. No, it no. doesn't. Because the way limited, if you're a good guy through all three games and there's three paths there and they're like, here's the good guy path, you can take that path. Yeah, but the good guy path has blue explosions and the bad guy path has red explosions, <laughs> where if that's the only difference, you should have just taken me there. Yeah. That's my point. It's yeah, like, I mean, as an outsider, it seems a little petty. Well, I do. Ha I have a quote here from uh, Casey Hudson that he actually gave in Game Informer earlier, you know, beginning of this year. And he says, this story arc is coming to an end with this game. This means the endings can be a lot more different. That's one of the key points. At this point, we're taking into account so many decisions that you have made as a player and reflecting a lot of that stuff. That's a quote from the exec producer four months, three months ago in, in, in a Game Informer magazine. But I feel like they, they still keep failed. going back to the ending sucks. I don't think anyone's debating but, that. We're not but talking about the problem. As much topic. as the, 
I, I've tried to change the way, I, and instead of saying the ending sucks, I just say, I'm fine with it, I'm let down, but I'm fine with it, and I'm with Jeremy. It upsets me that they're going back on it and saying they're going to change the artistry of it. They're because I don't think most people agree with us, though. No. I think most people are like, no, no, you go back and change it the way no, I want. No, but here's no, the thing. I There's think only... actually most people don't give a fuck because <laughs> they're a normal consumer yeah, I mean, and a lot they of don't on, actually give a fuck. A lot of people on Twitter, when I was kind of discussing this before the show today, most of them were like, well, not most, probably about half, were like, I was totally fine with the ending. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and and they just like weren't, the they just minority. weren't, yes, exactly. But there, there were a lot of people who've sort of like, you know, gone and researched through, through the various things and come up with very, you know, got arguments where, you know, there's holes in the law, all of a sudden a certain character or two characters appear in a certain area, you know, out of nowhere. And I mean, that's you know, the post game scene, yes. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff there that's now led to this whole conspiracy theory, if you will, of indoctrination, where, um, you know, a lot of uh, some people have come up with some theories that basically the Reapers start, uh, you know, are indoctrinating Shepard from the get go in Mass Effect 3. And, all, you know, you see th things that nobody else can see and it's tapped into dreams. And, you know, having watched, uh, uh, there's a whole video out there on YouTube, which is actually quite compelling. I think Jeremy feels differently. But I mean, well, if, you know, if you look again, Beaten the game, yeah. have not beaten the game. Well, no, again, I mean, it's relevant I, to my argument of beating right. the game. But I'm no, but I'm saying, but his, I'm saying like, his it, theory of why the, there's a theory out there of why, that the ending didn't actually suck, that people just didn't understand get it. it. Yeah. People so, always say that about everything. Though. Right, right, right. exactly. Like and the thing so is, like, oh, is you just it, didn't understand if it. you haven't actually beaten the game, like, the guy does, it's clever editing, essentially. It's it's a good, fat, like, you're like, oh, that, uh, that's, that could be one reason why, you know. My you, argument for why that it can't be real is that Bioware wouldn't have had to come out and say, then we're switching the ending. Exactly. Out. If that was, if it was really that deep and that yeah. well thought out, and maybe it is, maybe there are elements of that, right. but I just feel like if that was truly, in the, you watch that video and your mind is blown because yeah. you're like, holy shit, all this totally adds up. Yeah. And then he realized the guys kind of cut it where oh, he's jimmying. He's jimmying and he, a little bit. And he puts in audio clips where they weren't and there's actually a couple, there. There's, and there's some stretches that could be true yeah. but it's like if that was really true i wish bioware would just step away and be like we finished the game we we, we wanted will. to yeah. and also i think when you take casey's quote and you say that the game the end of the game is going to be i mean it's what's he say it's like the end is going to be crafted for you the end of the trilogy is crafted for me mm -hmm. because that whole last game is crafted. But he so, you know he says it takes into account you know everything. It, I mean every done. single so. thing leading up to that last 15 minutes does take into account. And I think that's the issue. I think people and also like where are we at with this technology, right? Like no other game has ever done anything remotely like this. Right. So what are the are there limitations? I don't know. It's like I was talking about that with some friends. It was like next gen we're obviously going to see a couple maybe two or three more games try to do this. Yeah. But that's a lot of it's a lot of work when you talk to a pro programmer and go, make a game, make the first game, and hope, and add all these tags and add all these At things the that have to time, carry should over. Should they have not prepared for that when they worked on the first game? I mean, should they have not had the foresight to see issues like that coming and worked right. all that but out? But I'm saying they did they actually complain. have a lot of foresight in, you, in this industry where whole companies go over uh, under because one game doesn't ship. Yeah or sell the right way, it's a, they put a lot of work into the first and second game to make the stuff pay off. And I think a lot of the story in the third game pays off. Now, Marcus, you haven't said yet whether you're okay with them changing the ending. Well, I mean, I, I'm caught between a rock and a hard place because, like I said, I do agree with you that if it's an artist's vision and an author's vision, I mean, look, I may not like what... George Lucas did with the Star Wars, the, the, the new analogy, Star Wars trilogy, yeah. but I, you know, I have to accept it because it's <laughs> his new his universe. Yeah. Um, but the thing that's, that's thrown me for a loop is Bioware. I mean, it, it Bioware. I didn't expect Bioware to turn around and say we're going to be altering it, yeah. and it would take something seismic for them to admit that because they're a very confident company. They're backed by EA. It's not just about sales figures and this Amazon prepare, you know, dot com. You know. But I, I, think it, I think it also might be that, and this is my own personal conspiracy theory, that taps into the day one DLC, which, you know, they have the Reaper, which I think is disgusting. I mean, you know, the fact that the Reapers, Protean. you know, you're Protean, yeah. sorry, you have to take the Protean. <laughs> Rippers on the brain, but the fact that you know a key component of the law, it, you have to pay an extra ten bucks for, yeah. is taking the piss. But this is where I think the grubby or, little fingers. Or you mean, arts. or you mean you just buy the game new? 
No, well, no, no, you, no, you had to buy the special edition. edition. You had to buy the collector's edition, out, which was 10 bucks more or, okay. or whatever. Or you yes, bought it But, I mean, you know, if you're going to do that, you stick a nobody character in. You yeah. don't stick. Like Zaid. Yeah. Yeah, like but Zaid. I think this has got the grubby little fingers of electronic like arts all over it. I think this is, again, you know, my own personal feeling that, you know, maybe that there is DLC on the way and this kind of like ending that perhaps Bioware were perhaps even not too happy with themselves. That, but, that's, you know, but that's the problem. Well, let me finish. Uh, let me finish. Um, I think that there is probably, you know, the, the plan was for DLC that was going to finish up. Because where could they have gone with the, with the DLC after these endings? I mean, you know, where if you've seen them, you know what's There wasn't going a on. whole lot of places. There wasn't I mean, a lot, there wasn't a lot of wiggle room. They kind of issued that DLC to make it possible to right. do oh, further more. DLC right. afterwards. But that was an open world game. I could, if, they, if they had to do DLC, they do have the opportunity to have like a, a meanwhile sort of DLC of right, of, like a side yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. It's, I but don't that's not that's not that's not Shep. I mean, you look at the other the, the Mass Effect Two DLC, and you know, I mean, they are going and saying, all right, and now you get to play Grunt, and you're off, you know, t tackling Reapers somewhere else. That's not going to really float it for people who have invested 150 hours right. into three games and have probably dropped in excess of three, $300 plus or more, you know, based on the three games, the DLC, getting collector's editions, whatever. I mean, it's a very lucrative, lucrative franchise. But and it just cool. feels to me, that, and you know, we had the discussion earlier, and you kind of you, you talked me around where I said it was perhaps missing a third act, right. but perhaps it also, it just miss, misses half of a third act. It needs closure. A lot of people have invested so much time, they need closure. I don't want to see my shepherd basically have one cockamamie decision or, or another, and then it's just like, I'm, I'm just sitting there watching this canned engine. It's it. actually but a, it is the end of a trilogy. Right. I mean, they have to end it. No, they it's have actually, to end it, but really BioWare can do it better ballsy, than that. It's a really ballsy ending. Yeah. If you, things change a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah. so, you know. Depending on your choice, a lot huge changes. Huge spoilers, so cover your ears for 15 seconds, Yeah, we'll seconds, do like please. spoilers and then end spoilers. <laughs> yeah. So just mute it. <laughs> yeah, just go. At the end, all the mass relays explode. So now you can't travel between these universes right. and you have the entire or these galaxies. fleet you've brought with you and sitting at Earth. In theory, the whole fleet of every race is sitting at Earth. And Earth has been totally destroyed. destroyed. Yeah. So it's like that's a really ballsy ending in terms of not being able to add DLC. Right. Because like, how do I jump over to Thessia now? How or how do I go do this? Doesn't it become because you brought the other races there, right, to help defend right. Earth? So doesn't it then maybe become a civil war on Earth? I don't. People are like, who's going to take the Earth? Now? Possible. That's what I'm saying. That's it's such true. a. I mean, but there the, are options. It's yeah. called Mass Effect, though, because of the mass relays. Yeah. Right. And it's like they There's took also, those out. So it's to me, it's just a weird. It's a yeah, weird move, and it's a ballsy. But there's also some some people who've, who've pointed out who are way more intimate with the Mass Effect universe than me that you know it is stated in Mass Effect long. You've read the books, correct me if I'm wrong, and yes. if they are wrong, that if those Mass Effect relays blow, the size of that explosion takes a bunch of planets around them. That's the whole point of the arrival. arrival. <laughs> but it's also like they didn't. Yeah, it's it's the way that they blew it up. It's like an different. They're more maybe? Like, like because you're yeah, using yeah. your own tech, the, the technology that made them to blow them up. Of, yeah. You're not really blowing them up as much as shutting them down. I don't know. I don't. This is pure fucking speculation at this point. <laughs> um, but, that's what it, that's that, but then there's you know there's characters, and again this is based on, on you know what I've read and what I've seen. That there are characters in that ending who you know get off a certain ship that were on Earth with you, yeah. right. and then all of a sudden they're getting off a ship on a no, no, I mean, they, uh, they, show, they show kind of how that happens. There's one missing moment where you just don't see them get picked up, but you see the ship leaving Earth. Can we end spoiler tags now, by the way? For yeah, no more spoiler tags. <laughs> spoiler tags. There. But here's, here's what I want to say about the fact that they're changing the, the, the situation. is It's a lose-lose situation. They're, they're, they're either saying, well, we weren't really behind our own ending anyway, and we just shipped it out because we had a date, and that's it. Or they're Would just... Would you guys b ever believe that, though? No, no but I I'm can't. saying... Like, it's you, such you, a, like... Yeah. It's a, or they're just in this day and age where certain fran only certain franchises truly are going to sell and they're going to do really well, and Mass Effect's one of them, to just 
push that game out because they need to, especially with SWOTOR just launching. Yeah. Right. EA was fine. Like you, you yeah. look at look, you I look mean, at like something like Syndicate that like people didn't even know came out right. because all the marketing was for Mass Effect. Right. You know, I don't I can't imagine right. them. So and it's I don't either think that. the doctors at Bioware or Casey would let a game or, ship or that they didn't. Like, they're like, of. all right, fine, we'll just it, you know, we'll change it, but we'll charge you for it. And it's like, and that's no good. That's well, that's we don't know if they're gonna charge for that stuff yet, though, do we? Uh, let me, let no, me but I mean, we don't know what. And when they also say they're gonna change or alter or fit whatever words we're using, no one even knows what the fuck that means. Right. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna make one of my wild and wacky predictions that the DLC that was going to wrap up the game that they were gonna charge everybody ten bucks for, fifteen bucks for, that EA was like, this is what we need. This is how you're gonna do this. This is what is basically gonna constitute the prologue or whatever it is of Mass Effect Three. That's what's gonna be pushed out. It'll probably, you know, it may come out at a reduced price now to appease people. But going back to this release date thing, EA stuck to their guns on Battlefield 3 and shipped Battlefield 3 when it was kind of glitchy. Um, it was, you know, Mass Effect 3 was delayed from last Christmas when it wasn't ready. And it was I never, still don't. I mean, it was I never just, delayed, though. I no, it, it delayed. was never delayed. It was. And also it was Battle never delayed. Q4 game, which makes a big difference because Q4 is where you make most of your money. So well, also they're... for them, you can't back down on that fight with Battlefield and Call of Duty oh, you towards the, the release end. date like a you, year in advance. Yes, you can't. Like for them to back down <laughs> yeah. would be a way worse be situation. A but I also think you know we're coming up to the end of the fiscal tax year here in the U.S. and the game had to ship at a certain at a certain point. And maybe do you really only... think it's rushed? I mean, honestly, I no. Just, I just think it's not necessarily rushed. But I think it, it's. There's, I think they made the think, they wanted to. I think there may be content missing from the game that, that we will now see in DLC. I think that's a possibility. I think the other thing, just as we're wrapping and we got to wrap up, but like everyone says, I think everyone agrees, Mass Effect 1 probably had the best story. And then 2 had a slightly. It was a good story. Not and as good. Final, final mission, but amazing. When you, have, when you have a game like 1, there's. And there's only two choices, kind of, for everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. They control the story so much more. Yeah. And then the second game, and everything branches. So it's like people have said, "Well, the writing's declined." Well, has the writing declined? Or no. when you write a script, Shane, and I ask you to do nine versions of the same script, <laughs> some are going to be kind of the same. Yeah. And it's like I think that's something people have to take yeah. in mind. There's only so much that fits on those discs. Do you think I, part of this too might be the hangover from that whole like dust up over the writer? Where I people think, attacked her and said they yeah, were ruining yeah, their games. I think I think Bioware fans. Maybe a little, maybe a little part I, of it. I don't know about I it because she actually fans, didn't work on Mass Effect Three. Uh, but I think Bio. Yeah, but most people don't. But that story also that, came out yeah. six years ago, and then people started talking about it nah. a month and a half ago. So it's like. And if if anything, I mean, you know, I mean, the the comments the comments she made, I mean, would not fit into Mass Effect Three because Ma Mass Effect Three, well, you can skip through the story as you know as as you go along. You cannot skip through the combat, yeah. and there is probably in my eyes, it feels like there is more and longer combat in Mass Effect no, 3. I'm saying guilt by association. Two. Yeah, I, I agree. With the ending. No, but I think, with this writer. I think a lot of this has is guilt by association with Dragon Age 2. Yeah. People, since Dragon Age 2 has came out, there's been this EA is ruining, ruining in Bioware. Well, Mass Effect like, 3 isn't as bad as Dragon Age 2. Well, yeah, but also Dragon Age 2 wasn't as bad as people said. If Purely what you read on the internet, I would have never wanted to play it, and I actually had a good time. The combat was way better than the first game, and parts of the story were better, but you just, they fucked up the locations, and Didn't the story like, was, it was smaller. Too, it was too linear. It was too linear, exactly, but that's what I'm saying. I think, I think Bioware fans have a, Bioware has a very loyal user base, yeah. and Bioware tells their fans that they get to have own part of the story. And when that happens, people expect ownership. And when they don't get what they want, and don't, it doesn't turn out the way they want, they're disappointed and they're angry, and I completely, 100% understand that. But I also think people forget that, I've said it, I think I said it last week on the show, there's, when we were talking about the next-gen consoles, like, there is stuff out there right now where, like, you just technically can't do that. Yeah. And this whole game was the illusion of choice. Mm -hmm. Like, the fact that there's, there's so many options. We all know that's fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's, it, there's a couple options. If you've been in this, you know, if you've played enough games, you could see yeah. how this decision makes this thing happen. But it's still different, you know, it's like saying that a uh, choose your own adventure novel, uh, you know, it's like, sure, there's 800 stories in there, but same all fucking kind of the story. Same. So it's like, I, th I think people have expectations that weren't met because they're huge fans of the series and they were promised ownership. And I understand that. But going back to your original point, changing the end to me is. Yes. 
It's, it's a, it's it's a scary. scary proposition. Well, I'm disappointed because, to be honest with you, I have a lot of respect for BioWare and the doctors. So, to me, they would be the last people I would ever expect to make that decision. Look, somebody who's just getting started in games, doesn't have a whole lot of experience, maybe not a pedigree, I could maybe understand someone doing that, but these guys, like they are some of the people who are the closest to creating art out of video games. So for them to bend well, to the will of the angry internet, I'm pretty... And like I said, but maybe it's an indication that they weren't perhaps too happy with the finished article. I mean, this could be a way of, of proving a point to perhaps the powers that be. If you read their you know? statement, though, they don't portray that, though. They, they're, they're basically don't saying, they, you guys are angry, we're going to make you happy. They, they've got, they've got, and they've, also, we uh, still they've got to be obviously political about it. Right. But I think, you know, we do have to, to wrap up. Uh, one thing, last thing I will say, the ass clown who wrote to the FCC about this. Yeah. Yeah, get a life. <laughs> there's, there's way more important things to worry about yeah. out there. A lot more important things to write the FCC <laughs> about. Uh, ex, yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen toddlers and tiaras? Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I think I think a lot of people are getting fix, fixated on this whole fix and how it's going to be different. They may not change the ending. Uh, They've said they're going to awesome. clear, but it could be it could be er, DLC yeah. that takes place earlier in the game, like Meg said. That's right. also happening. Who knows? Yeah. Like, Meanwhile, I think yeah. it's a really early to judge this whole story. Uh, I think they, they say I hope I get to come gonna... back in three weeks when we actually find out what oh, that is oh, and we can so we can have that you know this is what this is what's going to happen I'm going to tell you now and this is one for all you kids of the 70s and 80s basically the new ending is going to be Shepard is going to be uh, you know found in a shower and Mass Effect 3 is an entire dream Dallas ending circa 1980s thank you very much snow, lamest snow, ending snow globe yeah. ending yeah I mean we'll see I, I think there's a lot. We're judging a lot of things yeah. really early right that's now. That's what we do on this show. But, <laughs> no, but that's what the whole internet's doing. It's just like, I'm keeping that little bit of hope open that, yeah. you know, Bioware, who's always made me happy and I've always enjoyed their games, they're going to come through with an ending that, or something, or clarification. Clarification. No. Enough of this shit. All right, now we're going to talk about yet another old school franchise that has fallen on hard times of late. Silent Hill, Downpour. Chris, you reviewed the game and shed a tear. Um, More I don't than know. one tear, apparently. Brandon Tons. was sitting right outside where you how, were how many, how many controllers did you break? None. <laughs> Chris breaks controllers. <laughs> um, I mean, and, and to kind of uh, qualify you here, you've been a big fan of the series for a long time. You've played all of them. He cosplay I cosplay as Pyramid Head. <laughs> We can put a awesome. picture up if we want. Yes, we will. Uh, no, I mean, I, I've loved the Silent Hill series since in elementary school when the first one came out, and people were sneaking that. To elementary him. school? He's a young guy. I'm a baby. <laughs> um, yeah, no, playing that, like, super, you know, at, like, late at night and having nightmares, you know, waking up and shit, shit like that. That but, was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it didn't affect you at all. You're a model of adjusted individualism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, to, where, the, where this game falls flat is everything that made the Silent Hill games great. That is delivering a convincing atmosphere, delivering a plot that is twisted, you know, and again, also convincing as long as with, with its atmosphere. Um, and, and like no, a non-focus on melee combat, the games never did that. They do with Downpour. Like there's just so many things wrong. Like there were points in Downpour where I wasn't, I wasn't even convinced I was playing a Silent Hill game. It just felt like the name was tacked onto some really bad horror survival game. Now, the Wii game had some melee in it, right? The, I thought you always Wii ran game, away. The Wii game was all running away. Yeah, it was always yeah, running right. away. The one before that, though. That had melee what and it had that? firearms. Was that Homecoming? That was Homecoming, and you were like yeah. a veteran. I mean, sure, that one had a lot of melee and, and things with this, but this is all melee. Like, at least that one had like... Well, no, I, I, think, I think the more important thing is, obviously, even Silent... The first Silent Hill had melee, but... It was almost always better to run away. It's always better Here, to run away. They're inviting yeah. you, and there's the weird. I, I I saw an extended demo of this at Comic Con, and you know, there's like they were like, look, you can swing things all around. It felt like a, a like a, if anyone played Alone in the Dark, the new Alone in the Dark with a weird swinging system. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like there was some weird mm. weird kind of physics going on when you're trying to hit people. I just know that's the blocking as well too. Blocking and it's like effective. Every, I, I mean, I don't know. It just seems like things that would kind of you like you actually look the like idea of horror. Pain trying to describe you do. this. <laughs> it, it, it was painful to play. I mean, what every about time. the atmosphere? Do they get the atmosphere at least? Because that, to me, that is the most important part of a Silent Hill game. There is fog. Very. I mean, 
I'm going to mention it in the review, the, they even get the fog wrong in that <laughs> sometimes when you're walking, the fog will pop in. And I'm oh, like, wow. you can't even get this one thing Wait, right. Isn't yeah. fog in video games so you don't see the pop yeah, in? Exactly. Yes, no, the fog <laughs> popped in. And it's I like was an like, N64 game. For you. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things that are just like shockingly bad. Now, what is the story behind the game? How does Where does it tie into the whole That's, series? The, this is the first misstep of the game, and that is every time a Silent Hill game starts, you have a reason to go to Silent Hill. You know, in one, it was like you kind of were driving through, but you now you go find your daughter. In, in two, is you got a letter from your dead wife. Mm -hmm. You know, in three, someone is like, oh, you got to come. I'm going to wait for you, you know. But this game... You creep me out with your eyes right there, by the way. Well, yeah, the fact that you know that you know every single bit. So this one, you know, you basically get an email from a Nigerian prince who wants to <laughs> give you a hundred million dollars. Who needs five right? grand yeah. so he can get five million? Yeah. This game is you're a prisoner being transferred to another prison, and it just the 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 the, um, the bus crashes, and you're just your whole goal is to escape Silent Hill. That's uh. all. So, and actually, in t throughout the entire game, if you keep checking your objective page in your book, it keeps saying "Escape Silent Hill." <laughs> There's just no. Is there any? Is Please there any? Tell you but, what you need to do. I mean, what, one of the good things about the one of the good things about the old Silent Hills, or two in particular, you know, is that it takes the character's backstory and kind of interweaves it into things. Is there any backstory on like why you're in jail or anything like that? Do they at least? They explain that at the very last part of the game. Okay. And now you did yeah. say the end of the game almost it kind, saves it. Kind of redeems itself because it's only on level. So the end, the end is better than Mass Effect 3's end. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, why, why, I don't know if I want to go there. Yeah. I mean. yeah. So uh, let me ask you. Um, I mean, obviously they released this. I think the same day as the Silent uh, Hill HD collection. It's like within, the, it's like within the same week span yeah. or something. Yeah. Like that. It's not the exact same day, I think. But uh, no. so, what would you recommend people go and get the HD? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> although, I, although I'm hearing. Pyramid Head is missing from a uh, you know a couple of scenes in in the, in the HD version. I saw it on Twitter yesterday. They're cutting you I heard out. That was a glitch. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard. I mean, I, I saw like um, like Konami PR like mass sending a, like where we put the glitch the the patch up to fix the glitches in the PS3 version. So go download the patch. Would you recommend that Silent Hill fans buy this at all? I mean, is there anything <sighs> redeeming or rewarding in this game at all? I mean, it's it's okay. Here's the only reason to play this game is so that you know why it's bad. You know what I mean? Can, can I make a recommendation? Can I make a recommendation for Silent Hill fans? So this game's 60 bucks, right? Go buy Amnesia for yourself mm -hmm. and five of your friends instead. If you want an actual <laughs> yeah. survival horror game. Yeah, definitely. So let me ask, what's happened to the survival horror franchise? I mean, Alone in the Dark went tits up years ago. Resident Evil is... In an action, it's an action yeah. game. Well, it's, yeah, it's being mutilated left, right, and center with uh, Raccoon City. Um, Dead oh, no, Space, I think... I think the the necromorphs are more afraid of Isaac than Isaac is afraid of the necromorphs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, I would say Dead Space is probably the, the closest, closest thing, thing I'd to say, survival aside from Amnesia. You know, obviously yeah. the big, mm -hmm. you know, the big the, budget games. Yeah. Especially, I mean, I wish Resident Evil would go back to what it was. But I don't understand either. Is why has the genre died? It's not like people stopped buying the games or don't like them anymore. It's like it just seems like it's been this philosophical change from the developers to move it to something else. And they want the money. Shooting zombies <laughs> yeah. makes money. But they've always sold well. I mean, Survivor not Morgan. only the big ones. I mean, you never really hear about people being like, oh, I wish they did another Countdown Vampires. You know? Well, that's because the game sucks. It was like Silent Hill and Resident. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Most survival horror games. I mean, I played a ton of them like I played yeah. I played Martian Gothic I played okay fear effect I think was kind of popular but that may have been because of lesbians and animation style but uh yeah and there weren't really Clock Tower was never really that successful. It has a cult following. Like Parasite Eve, yeah, and Parasite Eve Dino yeah. Crisis. And Dino Crisis Eve. became the first action game right. honestly. There, it's the first one to kind of jump the shark. You guys remember D? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Game, I was, yeah, well, it was actually on the 3DO as well. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, that, Saturn. That was D2. Yeah, yeah. I trying to play porn. through the Japanese D3 version. D3 was of on that. Dreamcast, right? No, D2 was on. D2. Yeah. Yeah, trying to play through the Japanese version of that with no translations on my 3DO te uh, debug kit in 1995. <laughs> the most surreal experience of my life. Trip so, Hawkins is going to punch you in the face. So you say nobody buys this. Not fans, not people who like survival horror. Really nothing worth paying the 60 bucks for. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say buy sixty. I'd say wait. It's gonna. Trust me. It's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna hit drop. bargain very quickly. <laughs> Two weeks from now, it's gonna be thirty bucks. I so. wouldn't be surprised. Amazon's gonna have a sale. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Is it true you've written to the FCC to complain? <laughs> <laughs> what is the maximum amount of money that you would tell somebody to spend on this? How far does it have to drop before I'd they should jump? Fifteen to twenty. Fifteen to twenty. Fifteen to twenty. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. This is the thing Ouch. that kind of 
like hit me the wrong way. There are parts in the game that when you're walking through a door, it'll all of a sudden go to a fixed camera angle to kind of be like, remember when Silent Hills were like this? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, and God. Yes, it, does, it goes to the fixed camera I angle. I just remembered I played Amy earlier this year, which is far worse than this game. I'll say that. Yes. But it does the same thing. It did a couple. You have total control of the camera 99% of the time, and then every once in a while it's like, do you remember Resident Evil 1? <laughs> yes, yeah, I get that feeling. And then, and then like every time you pick up items, it's the same exact like, sound like you know you get. Yeah. And it's like you're playing a Silent Hill game. You're playing a Silent Hill game, right? They keep and trying like, to remind you. I don't yeah. feel like I'm playing a Silent Hill game, and the the, the film grain effect is completely gone. Really? So you're see yes. So you're seeing like all these crisp things, and it doesn't look pretty. Yeah, you, you don't know, want like to see it. there there was a part where I, during a cutscene, someone's iris was like. Blocky and Lego-y, and I was like, oh, "There's no. something wrong. It just looks so weird. Like you got yeah. a Lego stuck in your eye." <laughs> like all these old franchises starting to go down the toilet. It's pretty disappointing. All right, that's gonna do it for episode 203 of Invisible Walls. I do. Before I go, I do want to kind of let you guys in on what we talked about last week. The new GameTrailers.com is coming very soon. Get out of here. <laughs> No, I'm honest with you, it is coming very, very soon. We've been working really hard. We are working very hard right now on the new site. Our um, interns are working very yeah, hard. Everybody here right now is like lights out, working our asses off to get it finished. But it is going to launch in the very near future. Uh, we obviously don't want to give you guys a solid date yet because we don't want to disappoint you if things get pushed back a little bit. But it is very, very close. So it won't be long. You guys will be surfing the brand new GameTrailers.com as you watch the brand new Invisible Walls. Also, before we go, uh, I wanna let you guys know that there probably is not going to be a show for the next couple weeks. Uh, I'm actually taking a vacation for the first time in like, I don't know how long, so I'm gonna be out for a little bit. Um, and then next week, we have a bunch of guys out of the office, we really don't have people to shoot the show. So, we are going to be dark for a little while, but uh, we'll be here in a couple weeks, so hopefully you guys check us out then. So, thank you for supporting us, we really appreciate it. Invisible Walls is up and out.